Hey guys, good morning. Are going to the Department of Health to pick up copies of Aaron and Grain's birth certificates because according to healthcare.gov they are not US citizens and they want to cancel their health insurance. <laughs> Even though it's through a health insurance we've had before and the government has access to our records, we have to do this. That makes a lot of sense, right? So that's what we're gonna go do. Hopefully it's fast. Please cross your fingers for us. Also, I know now why I always thought that all YouTubers were unemployed. It's because you record like every moment when when you're not at your when you're job. Not at your, yeah, like nobody's yeah. like, "Here's where I work." <laughs> so here I am in the middle of the day, just running an errand. Birth and death in. I don't work. <laughs> All right, we probably can't record in here, so we'll talk to you guys in a minute. Okay, that was freaking fast. So we went in, filled out the form, paid for it. She gave me this thing, said, "Okay, we'll buzz you when we're ready." So we walked down the hall to the cafeteria, and it buzzed. Like it took us, we were in there for 10 minutes, at, at most. You know, I'd say that proves things are better under Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Obama, you fixed something and then you ruined everything else. But I appreciate not having to wait so long to get my birth certificate. One time that it was fast. Was, thanks, Obama. <laughs> now, could you do that at the DMV? So next time when I go change my name, which if you don't know everyone, my name is not Leah Stitt. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't changed my name, but we've been married for almost six years. I promised I'd do it by our fifth wedding anniversary. Now we're aiming for ten. <laughs> I'm just gonna change my name. <laughs> He's gonna change his last name. I'm gonna change my name to your ex-husband. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need to take care of that, don't I? This is what it's like buckling Graydon up. So much fun having a little boy who just plays all the time. Everything is a game to him. Uh-oh, now he's sideways. Uh oh, Dad. How are you gonna handle this one? <laughs> nice. The quick yank. Uh oh, oh, he's gonna lose it. No! Ah! No, not too tight. It will be tight on his tummy. Wrap it around his neck. <laughs> hey, Graydon, it's adventure time. Come on, grab your friends. <laughs> All right, she has story time with Aaron and Leah here. You can hold the camera while I pull out. Oh, I'll let you buckle first. That's my job. That's your job? Pulling out. <laughs> so I have a question for all of you out there that have children. What ages did your children stop napping? So our girls stopped napping between um, 18 months and two years old. So Brookie stopped napping at like a year and a half two years old and same with Lily. Graydon is three, almost three and a half and he still has to nap. Yesterday he missed his nap and he went to bed at 6.30 because of it. And normally our kids go to bed at 9, 9.30. So when did your kids stop napping? And when do you, I mean, I've known her kindergartners that are still napping. Have you heard about that? People have kindergartners that still nap. I know an adult that still naps. <laughs> What's his name? Aaron Stitt. <laughs> I don't know how people don't. I, I if I can, like on yourself. Saturdays and Sundays, I love. Oh no! I mean, most Everybody men loves take a Sunday naps. naps. Yeah. Everybody loves a Sunday nap. So I, I'm sad when they stop taking naps. Yeah, because then they don't nap with you anymore, huh? And then you can't. Oh wait. Oh wait. Aaron has such a nice wife who doesn't take naps because she's had to train herself that he can nap whenever he wants. Isn't that nice? Okay, so I'll tell you a story from my mission. So, since the Indian story, we'll save that for later, since I don't know if that was that interesting. But, so I was in an area, I went to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I was in an area uh, called Allegheny County, in a, a city called Duquesne, which was uh, pretty, I don't know, I'd been on my mission for uh, exactly a year at this point, and I had just come off of a, a time, about a nine month period or so, where I um, helped a lot of people come into the church, into the, our religion. And so I was feeling pretty good. And I met this guy, and his last name was, was Major. And I, I never, I don't know if I ever, 
don't remember his last his first name, but I remember his brother Major. He was not a, a member of our church. He was what's uh, he was somebody who was learning about the church, and he was unemployed. His wife worked, and he would stay home all day and uh, buy things on eBay with his wife's money. <laughs> and so we were trying to work with him on like a lot of things. And, and one of the things that we were working with him on was trying to come to church, which he always like he wanted to, and he would make commitments. And he'd been working with missionaries for like years, and nobody had ever gotten him to come to church. And so I th said to myself, I'm going to get him to come to church. And so uh, we made this commitment. We really like. We were like, you know, you gotta, you gotta make sure to come. And he promised us. I made him. I'm like, I'm like, you, if you're gonna do this, you gotta promise us. Cause I'm. I told him. I said, I'm gonna break a rule. I said, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna pick you up from church in our car, which we can't do. We're not supposed to do this. But I did it all the time. Yeah, Eric broke a lot of rules all the time. Well, I just. I mean, it was. You're a rule breaker. It's just your personality. It was in the name of. It was in the name of God. In the yeah. name of God. <laughs> and yes. and so. I, I got there, it was early in the morning, it was like you know, 8.30, we were on time for church, plenty of time. He promised us he would be ready. We got there, knock on the door, nothing, ring the doorbell, knock, 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 just, and I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm like furious, which you shouldn't get as a, as a, as a, uh, a missionary monk. Um, you should always be peaceful, but I was, I was like, I'm going to get him to go to church. And so I, I, I don't know what I was thinking, but I said, we're going to get into his house one way or another. I was yelling, and so we go around the back. And my companion was, you know, kind of new, and he's just like following me, and he's like, Elder Stitt, what are we doing? And I'm like, we're gonna break into his house, and we're gonna pull him out of bed, and we're gonna take him to church. And he was like, what? And I'm like, yeah, that's what's gonna happen. And and so I saw that there was like, on his back porch, there was a window above his back, he had like a, a roof on the back porch, and like all these like furniture and boxes and crap in his backyard. So I built up, I, I built up this thing that I could crawl up on top of, climbed up onto his roof, um, got in, opened up the window, it was open, fortunately. <laughs> Broke into his home, walked down his stairs, <laughs> and went and opened the back door to let in my companion, oh, who my. wouldn't come in. <laughs> he was like, I'm not coming in. Because this is against the law. Because like, like breaking the law. And I was, like, I was like, he is coming to church, you know. <laughs> and so, I was like, fine. I'm like, I'll go wake him up. And so I went in, and I, I banged down his bedroom door, which was shut. And I go, Brother Major, the missionaries are here! <laughs> and I hear this, <laughs> like, you know, like he's getting, you know, like getting out of bed, and he comes and goes, and I hear him go, Elder Stead! And he swings open the door, and all he had on was like these little G-string underwear. And I, not G-string, but you know, like little... Briefs. Briefs. I, I mean, <laughs> G-string! <laughs> well, he, was, he was a bigger guy today. <laughs> little G-string, like... And, I, and like at that moment, Daddy! it dawned on me what I had done. That I just like broken into someone's home who I had only known for a couple of weeks. To just, you know, like in the middle of the, like in the morning, like I'm in his home. And, and when it dawned on me, I was like, oh my gosh. And he's like, what are you doing here? He's like, did you break into my home? And I'm like, oh, I'm like, yeah, I did. And I'm like, and I, so I said, oh, I'm like, I think, I think an apology is in order. And, and so I was gonna apologize, and after I said that, Brother Major goes, you're right. I'm sorry. I should, I should have been ready to go to church. Oh my <laughs> and, god. And I was like, uh, oh, that's all right. Would you just get ready and, and we'll go to church? And he said, okay, give me a minute. I'll get ready. Oh okay. my gosh. Did he, he the join the church? He though? sure did. <gasps> I've never heard this story before. This is but, you know, here's the thing. This is probably very surprising to all of you, as is a lot of Aaron's stories and antics. But to me, the shock factor isn't quite there anymore because <laughs> this is my daily life with Aaron. He does things and I have to just shake my head and almost look the other way at times and just, he is his own person. <laughs> He's gonna get in trouble for his own actions. Correct. Is that all you have to say about that? That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that. Come sit with me. What? Let's talk around about your diabetes. No, I, I just am saying that, like, that's what that's what diabetes is. <laughs> is like it starts out a little like a little mark, and then your then your toes fall off. <laughs> Come sit down with me. <laughs> I don't know why everybody laughs when I say I have something. So this is why everyone laughs when Ernest says he has something because the whole time I've been married to him, 
he tells me that he's going to have a heart attack or he has a brain aneurysm or he's going to have a stroke. We've been together for almost seven years and none of those have happened yet. They're all going to happen at the same time and you're going to feel sorry. I'm going to feel so bad. I'm going to like wake up. I'll wake up it's and I'll. So I will, I'm, I'm gonna crying. wake up and I'll be dead. You're gonna wake up and be dead. And then I'll come. I'll come out and I'll say, "Look, Leah, I'm dead." I'm dead. Are you happy now? I am literally crying from laughing. Like yeah. my insides are laughing hard, and well, I'm tired. I wish you would have listened to me when I told you I had. What did I? What Diabetes. Was, I had jaundice for a long time. Oh yeah, he had jaundice. I remember he was he was certain that his eyeballs were so yellow, and then he had jaundice. For like months, he went to every night. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, now he has diabetes because he probably has what I would call an ingrown hair on, on his arm. That's how they start. <laughs> start diabetes. Just so everyone knows, diabetes starts as ingrown hairs and then, and then your toes fall off. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ellie and Jared and Samica mm. are having a meetup on Saturday at Gateway at a City Creek Mall. Yeah, I got your invite. So we're gonna have to go to that. Okay. It's after your class. It's at fourth, or your class ends at three, right? Well, it ends at one technically, but I mean. It ends at one. I thought it was nine to three. No, oh, I don't know. Your thing, your paper said nine to three. Then it's three. It's three. <laughs> He's the one that goes to it. And I still know where. Well, Anyways. I just know I didn't get out of there until like four last time. Yeah. Well, then that'll be perfect if you're already downtown. You can just meet me over there. It's just gonna be me and Graydon and Lily. Bricky is with her dad. Which is sad, because they're going to have Jackson and Noah, and Brookie won't get to meet them. But yeah. hopefully we'll see them again sometime soon. So have you, told, have you told people how, our, about, our, like, about you and our relationship, and how you were, you were married before, and had Brooklyn, I'm not, and I'm not Brooklyn's dad? Kind of. Dad, I mean, biological I, it's, dad. it's known, I think, now, but yeah, I was, uh, I was well, married. We know it. I was married once upon a time before Aaron for a short, short time. And well, I don't know. You don't want to say too short. No, it wasn't it too sounds, short. Sounds it was shorter than me and Aaron have been married for. It was We were married for a year and a half, I think. Yeah, it was about a year and a half. Um, and we got divorced, and I met Aaron, and I already had had Brookie in, within that marriage. So Brookie is Aaron's stepdaughter, but we're kind of... Our family... She doesn't look at Aaron as a stepdad. Like, Aaron is uh, is her daddy, too. So, it's not... She feels very close to Aaron. So, it, it's just kind of like a... It's a blended, unblended family. <laughs> but, um... Maybe yeah. you should, like, insinu I, insinuate that maybe she is my actual daughter. People actually... That, when we were we working... Say, we knew each other before I got married. <laughs> and, like, we stayed in touch a lot. And then they got to, no, and they got we divorced, did not. And, I, and we were we were actually together. Shut up. Like right, <laughs> certainly at, right after we got divorced, but even during our marriage. People think that Brookie is Aaron's because they both have similar facial features, particularly their nose. So people have always thought that Brookie is Aaron's daughter. It's people have never like when people find out that she's not his daughter, they're actually surprised. I've all every single time they're like, oh wait she's not Aaron's daughter so no one ever thinks that she's not your daughter they think she's she a sensitive like soul like I am <laughs> yes they are they are two peas in pods millions of miles apart <laughs> like us <laughs> like me and Aaron we are complete and utter opposites in every sense of the word but that's why we work and that's that's why we're we're us that's what they're that's what our counselor told us that's that's what our therapist of seven years has told us. <laughs> Multiple that's, what, that's, times. What our, that's what our separate psychologists have told us. Is that we actually work great together. And then when I when I when they said that I went, Oh, well then I'm we're fine now. Yeah, we're great. And now we just go to, to the to And I and he tells me, No, you're not you're not crazy. I go, Oh, everything's fine. So now. yeah, now we're it's fine. Aaron's not crazy. I'm a complete opposite of him, and I never was crazy. tendencies are completely gone. Yeah, he's not crazy anymore. He doesn't. He doesn't want to kill. Mm -hmm. I haven't flushed golf balls. <laughs> I haven't put golf balls in the garbage disposal in months. I know we haven't had to replace it for like three months. I mean, we were replacing it once a month, 
it was, you know, it was kind of expensive, but Aaron decided when that... When was the last time that I went to work with a plunger on my crotch? It's been... <laughs> It's been almost a year. <laughs> that was too far. I don't even know what to say to a plot drive. <laughs> when was when was the last time that I Oh my gosh. I've got it we've gotta end this now. I, this is too much footage <laughs> for an evening. I literally texted Aaron and said, Hey, when you get home let's end the vlog because I'm tired and want to go to bed and we've been recording for Ten minutes. <laughs> this could be a vlog in and of itself. Anyways, we're gonna say goodnight and we will see you guys in a couple days. Remember how I used to come home from work, except for it was always the neighbor's house, and I would go in. Oh and, my gosh! Say and like they night. would like freak out, and I would like just start making dinner and yell at them, to be like, "What are you doing in my house?" Yeah, I remember that. And then they come over here and eat dinner. No, man. I don't no, know. exactly. All right, say goodnight. Good night. Good night. And we were talking about how different it is, like, that people choose to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about how different it is that people, ah, go, we go. Hold on, I gotta do race car move. <laughs> Just give me a second here. All right, Nelly camera's on you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I started staring at my, I was like, it's hard not to look at I was yourself. like, why not You're I just- You're supposed to look into the camera still. I was like, why not just pretend that I'm talking to myself? Kind of do, but, but you have to still look into the little camera to talk to people and tell this them you're looking at the screen.